The trial has begun in the case of a former government minister in Finland who is facing three criminal charges for tweeting a Bible verse. Pavi Ransanen was Finland's interior minister from 2011 to 2015. She pleaded not guilty in her trial, which began yesterday in Helsinki. She and a Lutheran bishop are accused of ethnic agitation, which falls under the war crimes and crimes against humanity in the country's legal code. Her legal team is led by Alliance Defending Freedom. And joining us now is Lorcan Price, International Legal Counsel for Alliance Defending Freedom. Lorcan, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, would you mind, could you give us the background on this case and tell us what Bible verse uh, the former minister placed on Twitter? Ah, yes. Thank you very much for the invitation. So uh, this case began in uh, really in 2004 when uh, Pivi Rasnan published a, a document a uh, pamphlet about the nature of marriage, uh, the Christian understanding of marriage for the Luther Institute, which is connected to uh, the Evangelical Lutheran Church, which is her church in Finland. And in that document, uh, she explains well-known Orthodox Christian teaching on the nature of human sexuality and marriage. And uh, that document was published and remained essentially uh, unknown other than to the, the community of, of Lutherans who would read it um, until in 2019, Pivey tweeted uh, criticism of her church, again, the, the Evangelical Lutheran Church, for their decision to sponsor the so-called Pride Parade in Helsinki in Finland. And she tweeted a verse from Romans uh, about uh, the sin of pride, and she asked the question whether or not uh, the church could celebrate something uh, in the circumstances uh, of the Pride Parade and, and, and all that's associated with that. Um, and as a result of those two things, um, uh, or a criminal complaint was made rather about them, uh, an investigation was opened by the police, uh, the Helsinki police, and she was interrogated on a number of request, uh, occasions uh, for over 10 hours about, uh, first of all, the tweet, and then the document she published nearly 20 years ago at this stage. And um, during this whole time, there was media interest, as you can imagine, in Finland. She gave an interview on uh, a lighthearted uh, radio station, uh, the Ruben Stiller show uh, in Finland. And she then as well speculated about why it is that some people uh, identify as homosexual and others do not and so on. And uh, this gave rise to a third criminal complaint and uh, ultimately criminal charge against her. So um, for essentially expressing her beliefs uh, in written and spoken word in public in Finland, uh, this, this well-known long-standing politician was faced with three criminal charges. Wow, this is so shocking. Why is this so important for the faithful and, and for religious freedom specifically? And also, if you don't mind, Larkin, can you talk about, you know, is this part of a larger anti-Christian attitude taking place in Europe right now? Well, it's certainly important to, to, to deal with the first part of the question, because if, if you have a situation where well-known Christians in their own community, so in this case, Finland, cannot publicly share uh, their beliefs, their, their deeply held beliefs as Christians on the nature of marriage, the nature of human sexuality, without facing possible criminal investigation and then ultimately criminal prosecution, it has an enormous impact on the freedom that everybody else feels as to whether or not they can share their beliefs. Um, and we, we call this the chilling effect. It means that where you are afraid that you'll ultimately face uh, severe sanctions for sharing your beliefs, uh, for sharing your views, um, you'll be more reluctant to do so. And this is precisely the danger associated with these hate speech laws. And um, you, you mentioned the, the problems associated with, in particular for Christians, and I, I completely agree that these laws proliferate across Europe. Virtually every European country has hate speech laws, and they are designed to protect uh, usually what identified as marginalized communities from uh, incitement to hatred. But because these concepts are so nebulous, uh, they lack precise legal definition, you find a situation where uh, in the United Kingdom, in Finland, in France, and in many other countries, Christians are at the receiving end of police attention simply for quoting the Bible, simply for talking about longstanding uh, Christian belief on marriage, on human sexuality. And as, as uh, issues such as the transgender ideology grows stronger and stronger, even questions like describing man and woman and how God has created them 
can give rise to criminal investigation and possible prosecution. So this is a big problem, certainly for Christians. And Lorca, we don't have a whole lot of time left, maybe about 30 seconds or so. But as we reported, uh, the trial began yesterday. Can you tell us how it went and, and how do you expect this to play out? Yeah, so, so we're, we're very happy with how things went on the first day. Um, the prosecution uh, spent a lot of time trying to essentially uh, criticize the fundamental tenets of Christianity and in, in many ways tried to characterize the Bible as, as, as a hateful document. Um, we don't think that the, the judges hearing the case uh, were terribly receptive to that. Um, the case will continue on the 14th of February. It's been adjourned for, for additional arguments at that point. And we're quietly confident. We're certainly praying for a good outcome there. And uh, if the outcome is not good, we will certainly appeal it. But uh, hopefully it will be dealt with definitively on the 14th of February and a major victory for free speech uh, for Christians and indeed for everybody across Europe uh, will, will have been won. Well, Lorcan, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us, and we'll continue to follow this case. Lorcan Price, International Legal Counsel from Alliance Defending Freedom. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.